Hello and welcome to another C3 Stingray video. Uh, in my last video I talked about a car I was possibly going to get and I got it. And I'm sure some of you guys are going to love it. Most of you are probably going to hate it. But let me give you a little background on why I bought this car. Um, about a year or so ago I came up with an idea for a horror movie. Uh, I love horror movies and I love action movies and I thought it would be great to combine the two into this idea I had about a killer car and it's called Gorvette. Now I found a car that would have been perfect for the Gorvette movie and it was like two hours away from me. I drove up and looked at it and here's some photos of it. I found this car about two hours away from where I live and it was a very unique car. I can't remember what year Corvette it was off of, but it kind of looked like the Batmobile. It was really a different looking wide body Corvette. Kind of was kind of hodgepodge together though, and it had a lot of issues. There was a lot of stuff missing on the interior. The motor wasn't hadn't been hadn't ran in a long time, and I don't know. It was just going to need a ton of work to finish off. It had a C5 rear bumper. Which is pretty cool, but I I liked the car, and I was thinking about it on the way back. I even made a little Gorvet movie poster for it using that car, and I think it would have been perfect for the movie. But once I got home, someone else made an offer on it, and the car was gone. Despite the fact it had been sitting on Facebook for months, once I showed interest, it sold. Now, when that car fell apart, and I didn't get it. I started watching Craigslist and Facebook and you know marketplace for any wide body Corvette. I really felt like it needed to be a wide body Corvette because that I don't know that idea just sounded right to me for this kind of like monster car. So I kept watching and some would pop up. They're usually priced way too high or they needed a ton of work and a lot of them would come up and be gone pretty quick. Um, there's not really that many though. I probably didn't see five over the last year. If that, I don't even know if it was that many. And this one came up that I finally bought. It came up and it was priced too high, obviously. And then all of a sudden he dropped the price $1,500. So then I got interested. I started contacting him. He was over five hours away. So it really wasn't like I could just pop over and take a look at it and you know negotiate in person. So it was kind of like back and forth. I got him to drop it another $2,000 and I just decided to make the make the jump and just go ahead and get it and well let's just take a look at it so here's my 1975 wide body Corvette so you can see it has the flared wheel wells and the cool L88 hood it has that weird like almost like a running board between the wheel wells which I've never seen before I don't know I'm really I really can't determine where this kit came from if it's it actually was a kid or someone made this. Oh, and here we go. I had to stop the video a minute just to kind of give everyone a breather because I know a lot of you Corvette people are totally freaked out by Mustang taillights. I am, I'm not a Mustang fan. I, the only thing I do like about the Mustang though are the taillights, I, especially the new ones where they have the sequential lights where when you put the blinker on, it's like dun, dun, dun. I think that's kind of cool. And I found that you can actually get a relay or some sort of circuitry where you can make these old taillights do the same thing. So needless to say, these will be doing the sequential lighting. But I can see where this is gonna freak a lot of Corvette people out. What the hell? You know, and that's what gets me about this whole kit is I'm wondering how much of this, this guy just did himself because these lights obviously were manufactured for this did they sell a kit that was already like this? Where they have worked for those kind of lights? I mean, that seems kind of weird. And I'm wondering how much of this is a kit and how much of this is this guy's just own creation. I'm wondering if we'll ever know. Actually, I might try to track down the original owner. I have that information. Hmm, that's a good idea. So these are 67 to 68 Mustang taillights, which I thought was a really unique choice. And we're back on the passenger side. Those flared wheel wheels and that one side pipe, the other side pipe is gone. And also you can see that, I don't know if he was planning on cutting the holes out for those vents there or 
I'm just going to place just the vents on top of that, but you can see where the vents were. And also you can see the bumper bar is missing. I couldn't figure that out, but after a while, I, I, I will we'll come back to that, but I figured out why the bumper bar was missing. Here we have the interior. Yes, we're going with the crushed red velvet plush look. Obviously the the dash panel is all still original and it's actually not in too bad a shape. But these seats, I'm not sure what they came out of. Is it an Oldsmobile or something? Or are they, did they just cover up the original seats? I'm not sure. I haven't looked into it that close. But they did cover it with this really plush red material and you can see if that was all stuffed. That would probably be a pretty comfortable seat. but. It's very 70s looking. You can see that he covered all the interior pieces with that same type of material. I guess we want to go with that crushed velvet look. Um, I haven't really determined what I'm going to do with the interior yet. If I'm going to keep going in that direction or take it back to the original or go somewhere else, I'm not sure. These are all the pieces. You can see the vents are there, and then here's these pieces that go on the outside of the taillights. The taillights, those are the 67, 68 Mustang taillights. And those dents in there, I figured out, was because the bumper bar couldn't fit in there because the lights wouldn't fit in there. And then he had to be dented to even get in there with the bumper bar post there. So, yeah, I'm still not sure about what I'm going to do with all that. You can see the, the chrome pieces fit right in those holes, right into the light. Uh, those pieces that we have are kind of pitted. Might try to find some nicer ones, I'm not sure. Maybe they have some reproduction ones. And the T-tops, he cut holes in it because I guess he was planning on putting glass in those holes. And once again, we're back to that, that plush material covering the bottom side of the T-tops. I will say though, he did a really good job cutting these holes. These holes are like perfect. They're centered and they're really nice clean cut. So I guess we need some purple glass in there or something. And here we are with the engine. Now the engine obviously no one did anything with and I don't know even when the last time this thing was started. It turns over but I haven't messed with it yet. And you can tell, I'm pretty sure, I haven't checked numbers, but I'm pretty sure that's an original engine. It even has the AC on there still, which is surprising. And there's the header going down to this side pipe, which is cool. I like the side pipe, but I have an issue. Yeah, there's a transmission leak. But I have an issue with this side pipe. Is it right underneath that little step panel that I was talking about so wouldn't the heat from that like mess with the fiberglass and the paint there's not that much space in between the two a couple inches and those side pipes always get really hot so I don't know if I can come up with some sort of heat guard there or something to help protect the paint and the fiberglass or I gotta go with the regular exhaust I actually like to stay with those side pipes I mean obviously get some new side pipes this one's Pretty much gone and the other one is completely gone these are really long too they go all the way to the back and here we have another piece it's a see-through target top yes I know there's companies that make these for C3 stingrays but this one almost looks homemade it almost looks like they took the frame off of a C4 target top and added plastic pieces to make it work but I don't know if that's even possible. I don't know if the sizes are the same or not, but it's just really weird. Those are the pieces that hold it on. See right there, those fit into where the T-tops would fit in. Those two pieces just on the one side. And then these pieces screw in to that plastic, which the plastic looks like it's just glued to the top. I don't know. I don't know if I would trust this thing going down the road 70 miles an hour. But you got the two pieces that screw in there. And I'm not sure how this back piece goes on. You can see it's adjustable. 
You can move it, and it's got to screw into something, but I'm not sure if something else has to be put on there or how this would work. Obviously, something's missing. So here's another look at the body. If anyone's heard of it or seen this body kit before, let me know. But I feel like he just got some flares and put them on, made this back piece, put an L88 hood on it, and that's pretty much the extent of it. It's definitely a different looking Corvette. <laughs> This will be the new Gorvette car. Whether the Gorvette movie is ever made or not, um, it's hard to say, but this car will get completed. So you should subscribe to the channel because you'll see the process of what it goes from or from, from here to the completion. There's a lot of work to be done, engine work, but there'll be also a lot of great videos I'm going to be doing rebuilding, taking off trailing arms, rebuilding them putting on new joints, rebuilding the front end. I mean, there's a lot of videos we're going to have off this car. So that's another good reason that I wanted the C3 Corvette. This 1975 wide body <laughs> monster car. Um, love to hear your comments on this one. Um, and if you need any C3, C4, C5 Corvette parts, go to my website at c3stingray.com. And that is it. Got a lot of work to do.